All right, so I'm going to be showing you guys how I use Vim to learn French. So last semester I took Creole, which is actually a derivative of French spoken primarily in Haiti. And um, I wanted to make myself learn it more efficiently, so I did a few optimizations using Vim. So one thing, the first thing I did actually was I created a Creole file type. So inside my runtime directory or my configuration, I added an FTDetect folder and I added Creole to it. So pretty much what this does is auto command says, any file that ends in .creole, apply the file type to creole and mark down to it. So with this, I'll get all the markdown highlighting and um, key bindings I might already have set. In addition to this, create another file type called creole. So if I go into my FT plugin directory, I can see creole. I create a file called creole, and every single time I create a .creole file, this will be sourced. So um, the first thing you can tell in this file is that I use a spell file. So what a spell file pretty much does, uh, so for example, here's a thing.creel. So when we open this, it'll have markdown, but also have all the bindings that we have in this file. So the first thing about this spell file is uh, it just lets me autocomplete words pretty easily. So if I were to be typing MO and just control N, it'll autocomplete from all the list of words I have in my spell file. Or if I were to be typing PW or something or S, I could like get a listing of all the words I have in my spell file that begin with S. And this is a very nice thing since like if you forget a word, it's like, oh, you don't really have to remember. You just have to remember the first letter at least. Then you can just like scroll through and like find the word that you want to spell. And uh, so what this is pretty much just, this is just a file inside of my directory right here called spell, <laughs> uh, creoleutf.add.spell. Well, there's a binary file, but um, this is a spell file right here. And so this is just like a long list of all the Creole words I have. Um, and I just use those to autocomplete inside the Creole files. If I were to be doing my homework or something and like discover a new word, all I would have to do to add to it is just type ZG. And if we go inside of our the file again, you'll see at the bottom, this word was added. If I were to type ZUG, you see at the bottom it says, at the bottom it says removed, ZUG. And then if we go back here, after a while it'll comment it out. And so that'll pretty much do most of my autocomplete and I won't really need anything else after that but I still have a few more optimizations that I use that really help so if you look here oh one thing I should mention also is I have ignore case and infer case set to true so if I were to be typing mobilize that word mobilization it'll autocomplete when it's uppercase and also when it's lowercase and I can also if like I just have some like uh, weird casing it'll autocomplete that as well okay cool so the next thing I have is I have just a few helper functions just to um, open up just some random things I need. So GTS will open up the course web page. GTC will open up the course Zoom link. GTA will also op will open up our textbook. So if I do GTA, it'll just bring me to the textbook, which instead of having to find the path and that kind of stuff. Then GTT will open up the all important Google Translate. So if I open up my web browser here, I do it again and you can see that it opens up Google Translate for me. And the next thing I have is probably the most <laughs> useful thing that I have in this entire configuration. It's some it's a plugin I use called G Translate and I use it to translate the text I'm currently typing. So like for example, if I were to be typing moi pa sa and then I don't know how to like say a certain word in Creole, like I don't know, like school. This sentence doesn't make sense, but that isn't, that's not important. So like score right here. So I can highlight school. And one thing to notice, I have to hit escape before I do this, but then I can do leader TTC. And then what that'll do is it'll go to that word and it'll translate it into Creole. You can see I have that right here. So I have that for normal mode and um, visual mode. So I can, I'm pretty sure when you do it for um, normal mode, it'll like translate the entire line, but I think that might be a bit glitchy. So then after that, I also have the binding to do from um, from Creole to English. So like if I were to, I don't know, like we don't know what mobilization means. So if no one were, if uh, you were to not know what this word means, you could do leader TTing TTE. Oh, sorry. You have to highlight it and then escape leader TTE. And it'll just go and just translate that word into English. So we could have, for example, and then we could just translate this part of the sentence, translate to English, and then it will might take a second, but it'll translate, go to Google Translate API and just like translate that into English for us. 
And so this is really useful when you're doing a, a textbook and you like, don't really know what a word is, so you can just quickly figure out its meaning. And that's pretty much all I use. Uh, it really shows that with Vim, you can do even more than just like set bindings. You can like create custom file types and these file types can do absolutely whatever you want. And that can just like make your configuration like so much more extensible by just doing like this simple thing. Like I just had to add two files and like now I can complete my homework 10 times as fast. It just goes to show the power of NeoVim and Vim.